On that last slide with butane, we saw the distinction between eclipsed and staggered conformations, but also among the staggered ones, the distinction between gauche and anti. And so when we're comparing conformations, we have these different types of strain that we are dealing with, and these are terms you will also need to know. That first one, torsional strain, torsional means twisting, and it has to do with the strain that accounts for the difference between staggered versus eclipsed conformations. There's a lot of torsional strain in eclipsed conformations, and that's relieved by just turning or twisting the bond to make those bonds staggered. In a, in a molecule that has the bond staggered, we say there is no torsional strain. Steric strain, that relates to the difference between gauche and anti. If you look back at that last slide for butane, we've got two different versions of a staggered conformation. One that has the methyl groups at a 60 degree torsional angle, um, and the other one in which that angle is 180 degrees. And so steric strain is used to account for the difference in energy between those two and why gauche is not as um, stable as anti. And as it says there, it has to do with atoms being too close together. Hydrogens are pretty small, but when you start replacing hydrogens with methyl groups or any alkyl group that's bigger than that, uh, steric strain becomes a factor. And the more atoms you have, the larger they are, the more that steric strain is important. This last kind of strain, you don't see that until you get to rings. Uh, with chain compounds, there is no angle strain. But when you start putting carbons into rings, you can encounter uh, angle strain. For alkanes, they like to have those 109 degree bond angles. And that's not possible if you have uh, certain size ringed compounds and that's what the next couple of slides deal with is the angle strain that's that's going to show up when we start making cycloalkanes. From what we've seen so far with ethane and butane and really for any regular alkane um, they can generally find staggered bonds to relieve torsional strain and um, all the bond angles can still be pretty close to that 109 degree uh, tetrahedral angle that they like to have. But angle strain becomes important when we talk about molecules that are arranged in rings. And it was during the 1800s that this became uh, a topic of study. It was thought that if you make cycloalkanes they're automatically always going to be flat. This guy Adolf von Bayer thought that that was the case. But uh, if that's true, then there's really only one size ring that should be stable, the one that corresponds to cyclopentane, because if it were a pentagon shape, all of the bond angles would be right at 108 degrees, pretty close to that tetrahedral value of 109. But as we will see on the next slide, uh, Bayer, Bayer here was wrong about his strain theory. If it were true that cycloalkanes were flat, it is the case that cyclopentane would be the only one that's stable because the others would have bond angles that are either way too big or way too small. Remember that 109 and a half degrees is what tetrahedral bond angles are and that's what alkanes prefer. But it turns out that uh, six-membered rings are the most stable of all and once you get to bigger than six-membered rings, you still have fairly stable uh, situations. And so how do we determine for a molecule whether it's stable or not? Um, we have to do some experimentation in the lab to determine whether or not cyclohexane is more or less stable than cyclopentane. And the next slide shows um, the kind of experiment that would give us that information to allow us to directly determine which ring sizes are more stable than other ring sizes.